Hello, and welcome to this, the fifth episode of The Living Process. And this is a slightly different episode in that it's shorter than the previous episodes. And that's because it's actually the first one that we recorded. And it's with uh, Donata Scholler. And we recorded a full episode. And then after viewing the episode, we decided that perhaps it was worth going into a lot more depth on many of the topics that we touched upon. So we're providing this episode, which is about 20 minutes long and touches on issues in teaching, focusing, focusing and philosophy, experiences with Jean Gendlin, and many other topics, which I think are very interesting. But what we've decided to do is to present some future episodes where we'll go into much more depth, hopefully in a way that people that don't know focusing could actually watch the videos and understand where we're coming from and perhaps develop an interest in the practice themselves. So our intention is to come up with a few conversations that are more geared towards outreach. And some of the topics we've come up with already are, is focusing just a subjective self-help practice? And that would touch upon the philosophical, political, ecological dimensions of focusing, the relationship between focusing and philosophy. And is the focusing practice needed in order to understand focusing philosophy? That's a very interesting question. Um, and one that we hope to get into in future episodes. The issue of power in the listening relationship. Does the listener have too much power and is too directive somehow in that relationship? Or does the focuser have too much power and it's somehow too permissive a kind of relationship? Question of what is the body? Are we reifying the body in some way? Um, is there an inside and an outside? Is focusing just some kind of subjective self-help therapy? So we hope that you enjoy this slightly shorter exchange between Donata and I. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I look forward to our future conversations. Thanks very much. happy to welcome Donata Schuller, who many of you, if not most of you, already know. Donata is a philosopher. She teaches internationally at various universities, and she's the academic director of a program called Training in Embodied Critical Thinking. In addition to her work on Gendlin's philosophy, she has also done extensive work on the philosophy of Meister Eckhart, and she's published extensively uh, about Gendlin's philosophy and was involved in translating a process model into German. She teaches Thinking at the Edge and also offers courses as a focusing trainer in Switzerland, and she lives with her family in Switzerland and Germany. Welcome. I'm very happy to be talking with Donata this morning, um, and I know that we've just come off the end of the Gentlin Symposium, mm -hmm. which was a very intense few days, especially for you, because you were organizing it as well as presenting and attending. Um, so I, I feel almost like I want to start with questions that came up there. Okay. But maybe before we do that, can I ask just a little bit about how you found yourself in your life entering into this interest in Gendlin's philosophy and the focusing world and how you got here somehow. You know, Christiane Geiser was uh, once came up to me. She was a listener in, in one of my lectures. She came up to me 
She was interested in what I was saying. We went to lunch. She told me about focusing. I thought this sounds interesting. Three weeks later, Jen Lin came to uh, Zurich, held a lecture, and I thought, wow, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> and then I started, you know, then I started reading his texts. Yeah. And if you could say a little bit more, what, what happened next? You you must have continued your, uh, yes. your contact with Jen Lin. Yes, well, I I I I um I wrote to him, mm -hmm. and to my big surprise, he answered. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I began to start to read his texts, and I didn't understand very much at the beginning, especially you now these um these papers where in the most um, important places you just have the dots. Yes, it was a bit similar to a Heidegger text that you know in the very important spaces you have the Greek, the Greek signs, uh -huh. and, and so um, but I just went on and on and and then I think I I wrote a first paper, um, comparing him to a to the Renaissance thinker I was I was also researching, um, very very um exciting figure in the 16th uh, century and and i sent this paper to jen Lin, and he found himself rather understood to my big surprise yes and then i considered um to uh, to do the next because you know i was very unsure if i should continue in philosophy because of the reasons explained yeah. um because i just thought there's something kind kind of split happening which i just really don't which I really started to suffer. And I said, well, maybe if I can focus my next research project on his philosophy, then it makes sense to continue. And then I got a, 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 a you know, a grant from the a, a Swiss um, Science Foundation Institute, um, um, Swiss National Science Foundation. And, um, and then it really began very seriously. Then I then I wrote my habilitation, um, just kind of based on this growing inspiration of his philosophy, and try to, and and going back to the roots also of Jenlin's, of Jenlin's approach, um, then led to a, to a several year long research into phenomenology, classical pragmatism, hermeneutic, person centered approach of Rogers and so on, yeah. And then, then came this, and then the idea at the same time to to uh, translate the process model. Uh -huh. Then, of course, yeah. the contact with him was very intense because then I was also um I got an invitation to become a visiting scholar at the University of Chicago, and then I I think I met Jenlin almost all three months. I was sitting on his sofa and we were talking about process model. <laughs> So uh, was he quite involved in the translation of the process model? No, he was. Strangely, he wasn't involved at all in the translation. He just trusted us there. Okay, he, wow. he just trusted it, but he was very involved and very concerned concerning the introduction, which I kind of <laughs> really wanted to happen. <laughs> He really didn't want to. He didn't want an introduction, and I also wrote this in that introduction. He didn't want an introduction. <laughs> I I had one experience of trying to co-write a, a chapter with him, and it was a, a very unusual, uh, intense, slightly frustrating experience. <laughs> he was he was so exact yeah. in how he wanted things to be said, and he uh, often I would write something, and he would right back you can't just assert that yes and I, that to me says so much about his philosophy you can't just assert that you have to somehow derive it or discover it or find it somehow yes 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 mm -hmm. and that's it's 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 very nice how you say that because in, in some ways you know he's was I experienced him as the most generous listener i yeah. i ever experienced you know he had a way of listening to under really to in the tone of his voice to understand to make you better understand what you're just saying yes. in a most generous way. But he was such a precise writer that you were really, you were, you were struggling for inches. Mm -hmm. 
And, <laughs> so that was a whole story in itself. This, I think um, translating the process model took three years, but writing the introduction maybe also took as long. <laughs> 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 that I mean, I, I that's exactly my experience as well, as well. That as a listener, he was so generous mm -hmm. uh, and so easy to take in. I mean, there was no defense there. Yeah. And as a writer, he was just so precise. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. I'm wondering if I could um, maybe pick up something from the symposium that just happened. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering, first of all, if there's what you're left with, mm. what mm. The, what's kind of alive in you or sort of rumbling around in you. Mm. Well, you know, I think there, there was this kind of felt sense um, how lively it was. And I was just so happy about, um, you know, also many speakers who, who kind of showed how these approaches function into their fields, you know, in so many different ways. Um, things happening at the University of Freiburg where students all of a sudden discover focusing interview as a method to come close to experiential um, qualities and, and, and intricacies, no other interview method. Um, you know, could capture and 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 young uh, and and researchers who who showed how how, how this um experiential um, and focusing approach helps them for environmental issues and for teaching environmental ethics, environmental issues, and and there was so much creativity also in this link of of practice and good thinking. You know, that made also sometimes very complex theoretical approaches come so alive. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought, you know, this conference showed how very undusty this approach is. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very happy about that. Yeah. yeah. But what was your take? I don't know how much you could follow. Uh, there's a lot. I have to go back and watch mm -hmm. the recordings. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's three sessions I attended. And my response was, I expected that um, that sometimes with focusing presentations, it can feel a little abstract and like a lot of words coming at me. So I was kind of bracing myself for that, hoping that I could keep up. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't find that. I think, like you were saying, I actually found certainly the presentations that I listened to, um, I found them grounded mm -hmm. in something. Mm -hmm. It really felt like people were speaking from a place inside of themselves, free, speaking from their experience of something. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to keep it mm -hmm. someplace that my body could mm -hmm. process it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I really appreciated it, and I'm I'm looking forward to to watching the other recordings. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I very much like your your term grounded. Yeah, and and in in some way, I think that that's really like a a new and very honest and very experimental kind of culture um, that you know is happening or so that one is this there's a kind of sense we need to really try out something new um to to grapple with the problems we just cannot we get we just cannot just you know draw on more more theories or there there's something we need to enact in new ways as a researcher mm -hmm. um, and i think that was sometimes so tangible in these presentations um, mm -hmm. There's a couple of things that makes me think of. Um, I want to ask them both together. Yes. <laughs> um, one is a thought I have had in the past. Mm -hmm. um, when I've seen philosophers discuss Gendlin, is I sometimes ask myself, has that philosopher ever focused? 
And I'm wondering what you think of the importance of actually having the focusing process in some way in order to understand and communicate the philosophy. I'll ask that one first. Yeah. Yeah, that is um, a very important question. <laughs> and I need to um, kind of... Um, So there was an instance during my own, you know, research and my own having to write a habilitation, which is like a second PhD, that um, one of my supervisors said, well, if I have to practice this, I'm not interested in this philosophy. Well, and, you know, that touches such a major passive dimension of problem, you know, that that touches a hidden assumption of what philosophy is. Mm -hmm. and that touches something we need to grapple with as gender and scholars that have a felt sense that, that it is this practice that is also philosophically relevant. Mm -hmm. But in terms of a dominant philosophical understanding, this is per se not part of philosophical practice. Because philosophical practice is understood as, um, you know, as interacting with texts and um, and discussing on the basis of texts and reasons and 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 logic and 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 coherence and positions and knowing the discourse, it's a different kind of practice. And you touch something so complicated because very easily this kind of practice can then be shoveled in a, in an old box of well, this is just subjective, you know. Mm -hmm going to your own, but yeah, there is so much philosophical discourse that this is nothing we can really talk about and it's also not relevant. Mm -hmm. So you have a whole discourse that kind of makes it difficult to even start to find the words why this could be relevant. And I think this is also why Jenlin was so extremely careful because there's just, mm -hmm. you know, centuries of reasons why, why the subjective and the personal and the feeling just, you know, is, is something we need to transcend to come into a universal space. Uh, so this is kind of the major question. And I think it's there, we really touch an edge where we need to find totally new words, why it is relevant. And I think, and then maybe I stop, but I think that our whole crisis, environmental crisis, helps us that we say, you know, um, and that, and Siga also in her presentation, that there is some kind of disconnect that happened through a disembodied tendency in our tradition that is now also, you know, going on in a in a digitalization of mind, as you know, as if mind is really just just information algorithms, and we don't need this embodied mattering. Um, that we slowly realize um, embodiment matters. Embodiment makes a difference to our thinking. We we think differently if we include this vulnerable base. And I think our crisis will help us to give a totally new words to why this is relevant. Yes. Very much the edge I'm constantly struggling with. It, you know, it touches such a thick felt relevance, what you're asking. Yeah. I think my whole work is orbiting around that. Mm -hmm. So I I I know we're up to time, yes. and um, I have to repeat my my hope yes. that maybe we'll get a chance to do this again. Yes, that would be lovely. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you so Great. much. Have a very good day. Yes. You too. Okay. Bye for bye now. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye.